everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another episode. This time I, I'm kind of short on time so I only have like maybe 20 minutes to do this. But in my last insane career mode, I asked the audience if I could use a small little tool that came with a mod called Kerbal Engineer. The mod is basically just a readout. By slapping this on here, I can get everything I want from altitude, speed, g-forces, periapsis, apoapsis, thrust to weight ratio, delta v, all those very important numbers when flying spacecraft. Now I've never played with these parts before because normally in sandbox you get all these options automatically. I mean they're relatively cheap, this one's 150 and that one's 100, but in an insane career mode where everything is against you, including time, I wanted to ask my audience if this was sort of cheaty because I know that in the game when you upgrade your Kerbal Space Center you start getting readouts like this. Not exactly but you start getting readouts. It was a mixed reaction in the comments. Mostly positive saying that yes I could use this if it helps me out. Some negative saying that no go ahead and stick with the extreme version of not using anything to help you. It's more fun that way. And then I got a good and then I got a good idea from John Jolly Roger Aerospace, which by the way you should check out his channel, go over there and give him some love. But he said that until I'm able to upgrade my Kerbal Space Center, that I could use just one of these. Just one. And if it was destroyed in the craft that it was on, then that's it. Then I'd be crap out of luck. Almost like these kind of computers are very hard and rare to find and this Kerbal Space Center is so, well, broke that they could only afford one. <laughs> I thought that was a good idea so I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. For now at least. So with this new power that I hold in my hands, I am going to build an SSRT. I wasn't able to before because of the fact that I was literally guessing how high I was and how fast and all sort of good stuff and my apoapsis and whatnot. So it was complete guess in order to get into orbit, in which case I didn't want to waste a whole lot of money. However, with the SSRT, it's possible that I can get all that money back. I only have 12,000 bucks to play with, so this has got to be cheap, like dirt cheap. No monopropellant, none of this. We need lightweight. I'm gonna put everything in here. Now, my biggest fear is landing crooked sideways, or worse, landing in the ocean. In order for this SSRT to work, I need almost zero drag, which means it's just gonna be a really long fire stick, basically. It's gonna be a giant fuel stick. A stick. I mean, I guess I could put some experiments on there. Hmm, this is where it's gonna get expensive, huh? Like this bad boy. Slap him in there, Put him right there right there and then we'll put the goo right here 8529 parts delta v of 4000 uh i think we can afford one more fuel tank did that do anything for our vessel not really it gave it a couple more units of fuel but that's basically nothing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make it heavier naturally on the bottom of the craft when it starts running low on fuel this will help with re-entry now you might be asking why no parachute up here it's because this parachute right here creates a crap ton of drag you can actually get less drag with no parachute on the nose of this type of capsule than you would if you had the parachute on there. Of course, we need this thing to look pretty, right? Or pretty-ish. As pretty as we can get it. I could technically do this all day and we'd never get... I'd never get it the way I want. <laughs> I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna probably quit while I'm ahead here. Yeah, this is gonna drive me crazy. I mean, that might... <sighs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, that might work. That just might work. Okay. And of course, we need to name it the SSRT X1. We'll have Jebediah flying this because he has a star next to his name, which means that he can do a prograde, prograde flight, which is exactly what we're going to need. To say I'm nervous is an understatement. I'm terrified of losing Jebediah, but I already know that the math works. It's almost, it's almost zero drag. It's got a swivel, so it's got control. It's got 4,000 plus delta V, which is more than enough. And on the way down, it's going to be ass end heavy, which is going to allow us to go into a retrograde burn, or, or it's going to allow us to... Oh man, I'm so tired, I can't think straight. It'll allow us to go into Kerbin ass first, which will slow us down a lot, especially if I open this up, then this whole thing becomes kind of a missile. What I mean by that is, it's like as if this was the warhead and these were the fins back here. It'll just dart in this way, but the fins back here will slow it down. Back here will slow it down. So, yep, that's gonna be a thing. Okay, SSRT test. Let's do this so I can go to bed. And I don't mean to complain about me being tired and everything else. Like I said, I love doing this for you guys. I hope you're enjoying this because if you're not, I sure am. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Lights, okay. 
camera. I'm actually nervous. My heart's beating a little hard here. I'm, uh, this should work in theory. In three, two, one, launch. Okay, I think the magical number is either anywhere between 70 to 90 meters per second. So I'm gonna go for 80-ish. Okay, we're getting readouts, good. Cool, nice. All right, we're at 80 meters per second. Let's go ahead and dip down. Easy now with the wobble and prograde. I don't think, it doesn't allow me in the space plane hangar or the VAB to do auto strut. It just allows me to do rigid detachments. So I'm wondering if that's like an upgrade. Also, I deleted the ground clouds. So hopefully that'll take care of the, uh, uh, the, the pentagon shaped, hexagon shaped shapes that we were having problems with. It's looking good so far. I'm gonna slow down a little bit. We're a little too steep right now. Okay, Apple apps this is 74. We got 17,000 Delta V left over. Take about a minute to coast up. Ooh, a little bit of wobble there. Easy with the wobble. Okay, maybe I need to go ahead and just crank that down a little bit, huh? Wheel authority. Okay, okay, that took care of the wobble looks like. 20 seconds out. Let's start up their engine again. Throttling down. Well, we're in space, we're in orbit. It's a nice orbit of 75,000 meters for periapsis and aboapsis. See what readouts can do? They can create miracles. I wish he could jump out. That'd be nice, huh? But he's already got crew report. Yeah, it's just the same old, same old. Okay, we're just gonna open this up real quick. Make sure we got all of the juicy science from an orbital standpoint. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Not much there, huh? Okay, so this works, but now it's time to come back to Kerbin. It would be ideal to be able to land right back at the Space Center, but as we all know, that's probably not gonna happen. So I'm gonna take a gander and probably retrograde burn right around here, and hopefully it'll swing us back around somewhere close to where we need to be. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start retrograde burn as soon as it's kind of parallel with the Kerbal Space Center, which is right about now. All right, about 54, 55 for periapsis height. I'll get these ready just in case. And here we go. Bring this down just a little bit more. So like I said before, I'm going to leave the surface bay open so that it creates drag and turns this whole thing into a dart, basically. Going ass end first. Not a whole lot of fuel left. Everything is pretty much empty, except for this last canister. Looks like we might actually overshoot the Kerbal Space Center. Oh boy. Let's see if we can log some pressure data and some thermometer stuff. Oh yes we can. Nice. Kerbin's upper atmosphere. How about a- Yep, same with you. From the environment. Upper atmosphere. Okay. How about mystery goo? Nope, not yet. Alright, I can go ahead and take those off. How about a crew report? Nothing. Okay. Oh yeah, we're definitely going to blow right by the KSC. <sighs> Great. Note to self, do this way before you get to that point. Retrograde way before then. It's probably going to be a water landing and since KS, and since KSP's water is still hot lava, that means we're going to lose most of the craft, which kind of sucks. We would need to land somewhere super flat any damn way, which unfortunately super flatness doesn't really exist anymore. Used to. It used to back in the day, but then they did an update which raised the uh, terrain level by a factor of a million because they thought it would be cool. Yeah, and sadly they didn't, they didn't uh, put place that were flat and level so you could actually land on those air quote un quote unquote air quote cool places let's try observe mystery goo now zippo all right comes our parachute don't worry jebediah i got you buddy i might be tired as shit but i'm not gonna let you go you are not dying today or ever if i have anything to say about it all right going for the second parachute nice and easy nice and easy Oh, I can see it kind of stretching out right there. Observe mystery goo? Yeah, whatever, I'll take it. Crew report? It's crap. Okay. <gasps> we actually landed in one piece? What? No way. Oh, too bad I can't flip this bad boy over. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? We landed in one piece? No way. Oh, cool. I didn't get goo in the water. The goo escapes into the water. Oh, no. And how about some crew port? Nope, they're good. Well, I'll be damned. That was a 100% reusable launch. Oh, I'm sweating bullets over here. Wow, dude. Can you EVA? Yes, you can. All right, I didn't think you, I didn't think you could really. Oh wait, I think I done goofed up. I can't get back in. <gasps> no, oh no. Why are you walking in the water? You're creeping me out, Jebediah, but I'm gonna take it. I'm taking it, damn it, I'm taking it. Go back inside. <laughs>
<laughs> we need we need this craft. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Uh, this was um, kind of out of the blue, but it's all thanks to the fact that I have all this information now, so I don't have to guess anymore. I can actually build workable orbital crafts. But there we are, SSRT right off the bat in insane career mode, and I don't. I only think we have three nodes open. Three nodes? We already have basically an SSTO. Hmm. Okay, we can definitely use this to our advantage. Well, I uh, I need to get going. Love you all. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now. Bye bye. I really like these checkered pandas. That's a, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool idea. Thank <laughs> you.